So if the first thing you think of when you hear the word dubbing is, yeah, I can twist some dubbing on, on thread, it's a piece of cake, yeah, this video is for you. So when I think of dubbing, I think of really three different kinds of dubbing. Synthetic, natural, and blended. Now I'm sure everybody has, has done the, the, the whole tight bodied, twisted around the thread and everything like that. It's, it's really, really good, especially with like a synthetic or a longer fibered natural. It, it makes a great profile if you're looking for an exact kind of profile. But if you're just looking for a buggy, gnarly looking bug, I've got a couple tips that I'm going to show you. The first way we're going to talk about is taking a small amount of dubbing. It's too much. Small amount of dubbing and twisting it around the thread. Now what's important here is you want a profile. You want it skinnier on each end than the top. Okay, so what that's going to allow you to do is create a profile very, very easily. So if we want it smaller in the rear and larger in the front, it's a lot easier to do that if you build the taper into how you twist it onto your thread. So now we're going to do the same technique, only we're going to use the Hairs Ear Plus. This is typically the dubbing you use if you want a very buggy profile. Okay, so if I just twist this on, It, obviously it's buggier, way buggier. So next we're gonna use a dubbing loop. I know when I first started, a dubbing loop was intimidating and, and I didn't wanna have anything to do with it. But they're so easy, they really are. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a little bit of thread out and we're gonna double it over like this. And take a couple wraps onto the shank and then we're gonna go around it a couple times as well. Put it back on. So here's our loop. We're gonna start off with the synthetic again, the ice dub. Now, how you put this into this dubbing loop will, will be how the loop tightens. So if you have more material in the middle of your clump than you do on either end, you're gonna have that taper that we were looking for before, automatically. Okay, insert it in there. So I've got this cool dubbing loop spinner. <laughs> Love it. I'm gonna put it in here, pull it tight, spin it. And I've got my dubbing loop. So this is obviously buggier than the, the previous way of was spinning it in your fingers, even with the synthetic. But what I'm going to have to do is as I make a wrap, I'm going to have to pull the fibers back before I make the other wrap so I don't trap fibers. Okay, so I'm going to go put my first round on there and pull it back, lay down, pull back. It's as simple as that. Way buggier. So we're going to do the same method with the hairs ear now. The, the whole point of this is, is to show you that different techniques with dubbing will give you the best results just depending on what you're looking for. When I am going to dub a really buggy body, say a hairs ear, I am going to use a dubbing loop or a split thread technique just like I'm going to show you in, here in a little bit. Um, just because it makes it so much more buggy and it doesn't bind fibers down. So we're gonna go ahead and use the hair's ear in a dubbing loop and show you the difference in those as well.
Now at this point you can take a dubbing brush and brush out the fibers just a little bit and you'll get a little bit buggier as you go. So again, I'm gonna pull these fibers back as I go. So way buggier this time, way buggier. So when I was getting ready for this video, I, I sent a message to a few people and said, hey, you know, um, what would you like to see in, in a dubbing video? And Marcos from Hairline said a split thread technique. And it immediately hit me that, wow, I haven't done a split thread in years. But man, they're the most efficient way to get a super buggy profile on a fly. So, so for this technique, we want our thread as flat as possible. So we can spin it counterclockwise to help it flatten out, but then we can take our fingernail and slide it along the thread to make it as flat as it possibly can be. Then we're gonna take a bodkin and split it in the middle as close as we can. I think you see where we're going now. So right now, we already have our dubbing loop, basically. So we're gonna load this dubbing loop. We're gonna hold our finger right here and spin it clockwise. And let it, let it spin until it gets to the consistency we want. That's pretty good. So what we've made now, we, we've almost incorporated our dubbing into the thread itself. So we make a very buggy profile very, very simply. And very, very bulletproof. So we're gonna do the same thing with the hair's ear dubbing in the middle. So again, we have a very buggy profile. With the material almost built into the thread itself. I have rabbit dubbing all over my face. Okay, so as you can tell, there are several different ways to do a to dub a body. You know, it's some ways work better with certain materials. Some ways work better with different flies. It just depends on the profile, the look, the bugginess that you're really wanting to get. And as you can tell, th there's nothing hard about any of these. So do yourself a favor and get used to all three of these techniques. Don't just get in the rut of spinning your dubbing onto your thread. You're, you're gonna really limit yourself on what you can do if you're only gonna use that technique. So if you learn all three of these techniques, you can tie any fly as buggy as you want or as slim and nice as you want. So if you're digging these videos and you, and you like what we're doing here, leave a comment below. Let us know what you'd like to see. Now I've got, a, I've got a book of several, several different ideas and stuff like that, but I want your input on what you guys would like to see. Any tips, any tricks, any anything. Put it in the comments below, send me an email, whatever you wanna do.